Welcome to this presentation. This will be a lecture on personality disorders. I'll be attempting to cover the following. Definition of personality disorder. Types of personality disorders in ICD-10 and DSM-5. Features of each personality disorder. Epidemiology etiology, assessment, management. At the end, we'll briefly look at some psychological theories of personality. We will conclude with a set of five self-assessment MCQs based on the material covered. Some information about myself. I am a consultant psychiatrist based in Chennai, which is a city in southern India. I have worked for many years in the United Kingdom. First, we will look at the definition of personality disorder. The ICD-10 defines personality disorder as a characteristic and enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that as a whole deviates markedly from the culturally expected and accepted range. DSM-5 also has a similar definition, an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. Personality disorders are characterized by persistent, maladaptive, inflexible patterns of thinking, feeling, behavior, and relationships with others. They cause significant distress to the person and or to others. They cause impairment of functioning at various levels. And these maladaptive patterns have their onset in late childhood or adolescence and have remained stable since then. And these abnormal patterns cannot be satisfactorily explained by another mental illness or an organic disorder. We will now move on to the different types of personality disorders. This table lists the different personality disorders in ICD-10 and DSM-5. In total, there are 11 personality disorders, out of which the first 10 are included in DSM-5. Passive, aggressive and narcissistic are included in ICD-10 in an annex and schizotypal personality disorder is included not under personality disorders in ICD-10 but along with psychotic disorders. So the personality disorders in ICD-10 include paranoid, schizoid, dissocial, emotionally unstable, which is of two types, impulsive or borderline. Histrionic, anancastic, anxious or avoidant personality disorder, dependent, 
and there are other personality disorders or unspecified personality disorders also. Schizotypal disorder in ICD-10 is listed along with psychotic disorders. In DSM-5, it is listed as a personality disorder. As I mentioned earlier, narcissistic and passive-aggressive personality disorders in ICD-10 are included in Annex-1. In DSM-5, personality disorders are not diagnosed on a separate axis like in DSM-4. In DSM-4, uh, DSM-4 was a multi-axial classification system where axis 2 was for personality disorders. In DSM-5, uh, the multi-axial classification has been removed. The 10 categorical types of uh, DSM-4 personality disorders are still retained in the main section or section 2 of DSM-5. And the 10 disorders are again grouped into three clusters, cluster A, B and C. In addition, in section 3 of DSM-5, which is not part of the main manual, a hybrid categorical dimensional method to diagnose six personality disorders has been introduced. The cluster A of DSM-5 refers to odd or eccentric personality disorders and includes paranoid, schizoid and schizotypal personality disorders. Cluster B is called dramatic, emotional or erratic disorders and includes antisocial, borderline, histrionic and narcissistic personality disorders. Cluster C is called anxious or fearful disorders and includes avoidant, dependent and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. So obsessive compulsive personality disorder in ICD-10 is called anancastic personality disorder. A dimensional model for personality disorders is included in section 3 of DSM-5. This is not part of the main manual but includes issues that need more research. 25 maladaptive personality traits are divided into five domains negative affectivity, detachment, antagonism, disinhibition and psychoticism. These five domains appear to be reliable and valid in predicting functional impairment seen in personality disorders. We will now go through the features of each personality disorder. First, paranoid personality disorder, characterized by pervasive mistrust or suspiciousness, misinterpreting friendly or neutral actions of others as being hostile. There is a strong self-referential attitude, as the name indicates. There is a tendency to bear grudges. The patient cannot forgive or forget. There is a combative sense of personal rights. There is a tendency to be litigious. There is excessive sensitivity to criticisms and setbacks. There is preoccupation with conspiratorial explanations 
for personal or global events. And some patients also exhibit suspicions about the fidelity of their spouse. Schizoid personality disorder is characterized by emotional coldness, detachment, a blunt or flat affect, inability to express both positive tender feelings as well as negative feelings like anger, indifference to praise or criticism, preoccupation with introspection, there is no desire for close friends or relationships. The patient prefers solitary activities and few if any activities provide pleasure. And there is a disregard for social norms which is unintentional. Schizotypal disorder, as I mentioned earlier, is included in ICD-10 as a psychotic disorder and in DSM-5 as a personality disorder. In schizotypal disorder, the appearance and behavior are odd and eccentric. Speech is odd, vague, circumstantial and over-elaborate. The affect is constricted and the person appears aloof and cold. There is a tendency to social withdrawal. There are odd beliefs or magical thinking, paranoid ideas, ruminations involving violent or sexual themes, depersonalization, derealization or illusions. And the patient may experience transient quasi-psychotic episodes. Antisocial personality disorder is called dissocial personality disorder in ICD-10. The other related terms for this disorder include psychopathic or sociopathic personality or dangerous and severe personality. In antisocial personality disorder, there is disregard for social rules as evidenced by the person repeatedly breaking the law. There is deceitfulness, repeated lying, using aliases, cheating others for profit or pleasure, etc. There is careless unconcern for feelings of others or for the safety of others. There is a low threshold for aggression or impulsivity which might result in fights or assaults. There is incapacity to experience remorse. There is inability to learn from punishment. Can easily establish relationships but is unable to maintain them. There is a tendency to rationalize or blame others for one's antisocial actions. And there is evidence of conduct disorder before the age of 15. Borderline personality disorder is characterized by an unstable affect typically intense anxiety or irritability that lasts usually for only a few hours at a time. There is involvement in intense unstable relationships in which the other person is alternately idealized and devalued. There are recurrent threats or acts of self-harm, especially 
self mutilation such as cutting oneself there is disturbed or unstable self image or self identity there are chronic feelings of emptiness the patient makes frantic efforts to avoid abandonment there is a tendency to quarrelsome behavior a tendency to act impulsively without consideration of con consequences for example use of alcohol drugs binge eating etc there are frequent outbursts of anger or violence so temper outbursts physical fights etc there is difficulty to maintain any action that does not offer immediate reward when stressed the patient may experience dissociative symptoms paranoid ideas etc histrionic personality disorder is characterized by wanting to be the center of attention in events that one participates becoming uncomfortable in situations where one cannot be the center of attention there is exaggerated expression of emotions the affect is shallow and labile there is theatrical speech that lacks specific details there is over concern with physical attractiveness in an attempt to draw the attention of others there is inappropriate seductiveness in behavior the person is easily suggestible and influenced by others and the person may consider relationships to be more intimate than they actually are histrionic personality disorder is associated with somatization disorder narcissistic personality disorder is named after narcissus a hunter in greek mythology who fell in love with his own reflection in a pool of water in narcissistic personality disorder there is belief that one is special the person feels that one should only associate with similar high status people as only such people would recognize one's abilities there is a lack of empathy inability or unwillingness to identify with the feelings of others the person is envious of others but also feels that others are envious of him or her there is an arrogant haughty attitude and behavior there is need for excessive admiration and attention seeking the person sets one's goals based on gaining approval from others there is a grandiose sense of self importance so the person tends to exaggerate his or her achievements there is preoccupation with fantasies of success power beauty ideal love etc there is a sense of entitlement or special treatment or expectation of automatic compliance with one's wishes there is exploitation of others in relationships taking advantage of others to achieve one's goals in avoidant personality disorder there is avoidance of activities that involve interpersonal contact for fear of criticism or rejection 
there is a belief that one is inept, unappealing or inferior to others. The person is preoccupied with the fear of being criticized or rejected in social situations. The person experiences general feelings of tension. There is unwillingness to get involved unless certain of being accepted or liked. There are self-imposed restrictions in lifestyle because of the need for physical security. In dependent personality disorder, the person depends excessively on others for emotional support. There is inability to make even everyday decisions without the advice or reassurance from others. The person allows others or needs others to make important life decisions. The person subordinates his or her own needs to the needs of those that the person depends on. There is difficulty expressing disagreement because of fear of losing support. There is difficulty doing things on one's own due to lack of self-confidence. The person is unwilling to make even reasonable demands of others but may volunteer to do things that are unreasonable for the sake of others in order to get their support. There is a feeling of helplessness when alone. There is preoccupation with exaggerated fears of being unable to care for oneself if left alone. Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder is called Anancastic Personality Disorder in ICD-10. The person is preoccupied with perfectionism and orderliness. There is excessive doubting, preoccupation with details, rules, lists, etc. that interferes with the main objective of the task that is being done. There is excessive conscientiousness and inflexibility with respect to morals, ethics and values. Preoccupation with productivity to the exclusion of relationships or pleasure. There is a rigid adherence to social conventions. There is a general attitude of stubbornness. There is unreasonable insistence that others do things in the same way. And there might be a tendency to hoard or an inability to, to discard even useless objects or a general tendency of being miserly. In passive aggressive personality disorder, the person becomes sulky or irritable when asked to do something that one does not want. There is deliberate underperformance in such tasks. There is procrastination. There is failing to do one's share of teamwork. The person avoids obligations by claiming to have forgotten. And the person tends to protest that others are the ones who are making unreasonable demands. And there is a general disdain for people in authority. We will now look at the epidemiology of personality disorders. Prevalence rates vary in different countries and also in the same country depending on the methods used to diagnose personality disorders. At least 5% in the community have a diagnosable specific personality disorder. If unspecified or mixed personality disorder is also included, at least 
10% in the community have a personality disorder. In the community, obsessive compulsive personality disorder appears to be the most frequent type followed by narcissistic personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is the most common specific personality disorder in psychiatric settings. As one would expect, antisocial personality disorder is the commonest type in prisons. Schizoid, paranoid, antisocial, narcissistic and avoidant personality disorders appear to be more common in males. Borderline, histrionic and dependent personality disorders seem to be more common in females, while schizotypal and obsessive compulsive disorder, personality disorder appear to have an equal prevalence in both males and females. We will now look at the etiology of personality disorders. As with many other long-term disorders, personality disorders are the likely outcome of the interaction between genetic and other biological vul vulnerabilities and environmental factors that together combine to bring about the final phenotype. For most personality disorders, environmental factors, mainly early childhood experiences, seem to be more important. For example, history of childhood sexual, physical, emotional or even verbal abuse or childhood neglect are established risk factors for borderline personality disorder. Growing up in a family having a criminal offender increases the risk of contact disorder and subsequent antisocial personality disorder. For some personality disorders such as schizotypal, genetic factors may play a greater role. Children who display high reactivity, that is excessive sensitivity to noise, light, etc. may be at a higher risk of developing cluster C personality disorders. Having a trusting, strong relationship with parents in childhood may be protective against developing a personality disorder in the future. As a group, personality disorders show a higher prevalence in divorced, separated individuals, school dropouts, unemployed. So these might actually be the effects of personality disorders. So personality disorders may lead to breakup of marriages, uh, inability to continue education or employment. Most studies on etiology have been on borderline personality disorder as it is the commonest in psychiatric settings. The next best study is antisocial personality disorder. So we will try to look at the etiology of these two disorders. Looking at the etiology of borderline personality disorder, childhood sexual abuse, other abuse and neglect during childhood, parental psychopathology, parental discord have been identified as potential etiological factors. Biological factors include serotonin dysfunction, especially with respect to impulsivity. Dopamine and noradrenaline dysfunction may also play some role. Some potential candidate genes, for example, the 5-HT transporter gene, tryptophan hydroxylase gene may have a role. Hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis dysfunction may be relevant. Neuroimaging studies have suggested hyperactivity of the amygdala and hypoactivity 
of the prefrontal cortex in patients with borderline personality disorder. With respect to antisocial personality disorder, parental criminal behavior, parental alcoholism, discord, or single parenthood have been associated. Lack of parental supervision, especially in large families. Childhood abuse may play a role in antisocial personality disorder also. Biological factors may include genetic factors. Some potential candidate genes, for example, the monoamine oxidase A gene may be relevant. Maternal smoking during pregnancy has been associated with antisocial personality disorder in the offspring. A general low arousal level may be seen in these subjects, which might lead to risky activities in an attempt to compensate. A lower resting heart rate has been associated with uh, antisocial personality disorder. Reduced functioning of the brain's right hemisphere has been shown in uh, antisocial personality disorder. We will look at possible underlying psychodynamic factors. So in paranoid personality disorder, the defense mechanism of projection has been postulated. In schizoid personality disorder, the emotional detachment may serve the purpose of helping to avoid emotional pain. In schizotypal personality disorder, there might be escape from reality by fantasizing. In borderline personality disorder, the defense mechanisms involved include splitting, projection, projective identification, and dissociation. For antisocial personality disorder, denial, acting out, and externalization. For narcissistic personality disorder, denial, omnipotence, and reaction formation. So reaction formation in these patients could be that the fragile self-esteem is being compensated by exaggerated self-importance. In histrionic personality disorder, regression and somatization may be the underlying defense mechanisms. Now, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, uh, fixation at the anal stage of development has been postulated. The defense mechanisms of uh, reaction formation and magical undoing may be relevant. In avoidant personality disorder, it has been suggested that there is fixation at the oral stage of development. So these stages of development are those that were postulated by Sigmund Freud. And over-controlling, over-protective parents and early childhood attachment problems may also play a role in future avoidant personality disorder. In dependent personality disorder, the defense mechanisms of regression, idealization of others, and devaluation of self may be relevant. We will now look at the assessment of personality disorders. Personality disorders share many common features with functional mental disorders. The main differentiating feature is that in personality disorders, the onset is early and the features have been persistent and stable, while in functional mental disorders, the onset is usually later and the symptoms tend to be episodic. And by functional mental disorder, I am referring to axis 1 disorders of DSM-4 such as psychotic disorders, mood disorders, anxiety disorders, etc. However, this distinction is not always clear. 
Knowing the background personality in a patient with a functional mental disorder helps the clinician to be more realistic with respect to treatment outcome expectations. Hence, it is important to assess the patient's personality as part of the initial assessment, usually with extra information from another source like a family member. A trait refers to a single aspect of one's personality. The overall personality is an aggregation of many traits. A personality disorder is an aggregation of abnormal personality traits. An abnormal personality trait would not automatically mean that a person has personality disorder. Most if not all of us have one or more isolated abnormal personality traits. Only when these abnormal traits reach a certain threshold in terms of number, severity and impairment should the term personality disorder be used. It is generally not appropriate to make a diagnosis of a personality disorder after just one assessment session. Usually, a patient would need to be seen at least a few times. It is important to obtain corroborating collateral information, if possible, from another reliable source, such as a parent, sibling, spouse or family physician. Who has known the patient for many years. Previous medical and psychiatric records if available should also be studied. The differentiation between trait and state is useful when assessing whether a person's current maladaptive thinking, feeling, behavior and functioning are explained by a personality disorder or whether they are the consequences of a functional mental disorder. Traits of personality are long-standing and stable and are part of the patient's normal thinking, feeling and behaving pattern. Examples, emotional instability of borderline personality disorder, avoidance seen in avoidant personality disorder, and social withdrawal of schizoid personality disorder. States, on the other hand, are episodic and represent a clear change from the person's usual pattern of thinking, feeling and behavior. Examples, emotional instability of bipolar disorder, the avoidance seen in social and other types of phobias, and social withdrawal seen in depression. With the exception of borderline personality disorder, most other personality disorders are diagnosed only incidentally in routine psychiatric services in patients presenting with other problems like psychosis, depression or anxiety. Patients with mental disorders show a higher prevalence of comorbid personality disorders. Patients with personality disorder are at a higher risk of developing mental disorders. Awareness of the presence of personality disorders in patients with other functional mental disorders is important even if it may not be possible to effectively treat the personality disorder because personality dis disorders have considerable impact on the patient's functioning in many areas which may not be improved by treatment given for the mental disorder. And psychiatric patients with comorbid personality disorders have poorer outcomes compared to psychiatric patients without personality disorders. In the next couple of slides, I have listed the differential diagnosis and comorbidities of the different personality disorders. 
this is by no means an exhaustive list. Those who are interested, you can pause and note down the details. Standardized instruments are mainly used in psychology research studies and not in routine clinical psychiatric practice. And I have listed a few of those assessment instruments, the MMPI, the MBTI, CATL's 16 personality factor questionnaire, ISYNC personality inventory, the IPDE, the Rosha inkblot test and the thematic apperception test are based on psychoanalytic theory. They, used, they were used widely in the past, but that is no longer the case now. We will now look at the management of personality disorders. Apart from borderline personality disorder, the vast majority of patients with personality disorders do not come to the attention of mental health services. Hence, most of the studies of treatment have been on borderline personality disorder. The other personality disorders are usually incidentally diagnosed in patients presenting with other disorders. Antisocial personality disorder is, as expected, very common in the prison and criminal justice settings. It is usually diagnosed formally only after the person has committed a crime. Most studies have been done in specialist forensic psychiatric services setting, limiting generalizability, relevance and applicability to routine psychiatric settings. The management of borderline personality disorder, the goals of treatment include better management of one's emotions, avoidance of or reduction in self-harming behavior, building better quality relationships with others, having more clarity about one's purpose in life, improvement in functioning, and addressing comorbid psychiatric and substance misuse issues. If available, an evidence-based structured psychotherapy is the treatment of choice. Most patients are treated on an outpatient basis. Inpatient treatment, usually brief, may be indicated during crisis such as after an act of self-harm or when the patient makes threats of suicide or for treating comorbid disorders like depression. The psychotherapy options for borderline personality disorder include psychodynamic psychotherapy, dialectical behavior therapy developed by Marsha Linehan, transference focused psychotherapy developed by Otto Kernberg, mentalization based therapy developed by Bateman and Fonagy, emotion regulation training. schema focused therapy, cognitive behavior therapy. This is mainly used for depression and anxiety, but it may be beneficial for some patients with borderline personality disorder also. Interpersonal psychotherapy, cognitive analytic therapy, therapeutic communities where residential treatment services for patients with severe borderline personality disorder. These were mainly operational in the United Kingdom, but their use has significantly declined now.
regarding pharmacotherapy for borderline personality disorder psychotropics are not used as a primary treatment as it is unlikely to alter the natural course of the disorder they are mainly used for symptom management risk of overdose needs to be borne in mind while prescribing psychotropics drugs that may have some benefit include antidepressants usually ssris which may benefit by reducing impulsivity antipsychotics usually low dose atypicals mood stabilizers such as valproate carbamazepine or lithium and a range of other drugs have been studied for example clonidine omega 3 fatty acids etc as an example of the management of other personality disorders we will look at paranoid personality disorder patients with paranoid personality disorder are very difficult to treat as they are mistrustful of most people including or especially psychiatrists a patient with paranoid personality disorder is unlikely to present for treatment unless there are significant immediate problems for example the patient's wife might decide to leave unable to tolerate the constant suspicious nature of the husband or the patient may be at risk of losing job because of complaints from colleagues group psychotherapy would be contraindicated at least in the initial stages cbt to challenge paranoid ideas may help low dose antipsychotics may be useful in patients with functional mental disorders who also have a paranoid personality the impact of the paranoid personality disorder on therapeutic engagement compliance with treatment or the patient's tendency to be involved in spurious litigation etc needs to be borne in mind by the treating psychiatrist and other professionals if the patient is willing and motivated to change and depending on the personality disorder and the availability of services the following may help patients who have personality disorders psychotherapies ranging from supportive through cognitive behavioral to exploratory psychotherapies like psychodynamic self help books or online support groups can also help especially for motivated individuals treatment of any comorbid disorders like depression anxiety etc with medication or psychotherapy in order to try to optimize functioning in general as the patient gets older and as he or she goes through a variety of life experiences the severity of most personality disorders tends to decline even if no treatment is available we will now look briefly at psychological theories of personality these theories can be broadly divided into nomothetic and ideographic nomothetic theories talk about universal traits and dimensions of personality that are present in varying degrees throughout the population while ideographic theories deal with the uniqueness of individual personalities psychologists who are the pioneers in the field of personality include hans eysenck raymond cattell and gordon alport I think described three personality traits the so called gigantic three 
and they are neuroticism, extraversion and psychoticism. Using factor analysis, Raymond Cattell listed 16 primary personality traits and from these 16, 5 secondary factors, the so-called big 5, were identified. Neuroticism, extroversion, openness to experience, conscientiousness and agreeableness. And he developed the 16 personality factor questionnaire. Gordon Alport was a pioneer of ideographic theory of personality, emphasizing the uniqueness of every individual. He described three types of traits in each person, the cardinal trait, the central trait and secondary trait. The type A and B personality types were originally proposed by two cardiologists, Mayer Friedman and Ray Rosenman, based on their observation of the behaviors of their patients in the waiting room. One group whom they labeled type A were very impatient, sitting on the edge of their seats, in contrast to a more laid-back group whom they called type B. Initial research suggested that the type A patients were at higher risk of coronary artery disease. Type A personality is now called type A behavior pattern. And type A behavior pattern is characterized by high degree of competitiveness, ambition, sense of time urgency, impatience, self-criticism and also criticism of others, hostility or aggression, inability to relax, inability to delay actions and this may predispose to coronary artery disease. However, it is important to note that the results from earlier studies which showed a strong association between type A behavior pattern and coronary artery disease were possibly influenced by tobacco industry sponsorship which had a vested interest in identifying alternate explanations for smoking related disorders like coronary artery disease. Type B personality individuals are relaxed, laid back, not competitive, prefer creative occupations, they reflect much more before acting, but they have a tendency to procrastinate. Types C and D have also been described, but they have not been as well studied as types A and B. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Before we conclude, we will go through a set of five multiple choice questions. Question 1. Mrs. A is an office manager. Eight people work under her in different departments. Even though each is adequately qualified, she micromanages them, insisting that they do exactly as she tells them to. She goes over their work repeatedly just to be sure they have done it right. She is therefore unpopular with her subordinate colleagues. At home, daily, she draws up a to-do checklist of even routine things which her husband feels is unnecessary. Mrs. A prides herself on being a perfectionist. What is the likely diagnosis? Is it narcissistic personality disorder 
anancastic personality disorder obsessive compulsive disorder or passive aggressive personality disorder if you want you can pause at this point and choose your option and the correct answer is b anancastic personality disorder which is another name for obsessive compulsive personality disorder and the points which suggest that she has obsessive compulsive personality disorder have been underlined and the reason that this is not ocd is because in the question mrs a prides herself on being a perfectionist whereas in ocd it will be ego dystonic the patient will be distressed whereas in oc personality disorder it will it, it is usually ego syntonic the patient does not think that he or she has a problem question 2 lack of empathy is not a feature of if you want you can pause and select your choice and the correct answer is c dependent personality disorder in the other three lack of empathy is a feature there is empathy is present in dependent personality disorder which of the following is not correctly paired if you want you can pause and make your choice and the correct answer is a it is schizotypal personality disorder which is associated with ruminations involving sexual or violent themes the other three are correctly paired question 4 regarding the epidemiology of personality disorders which of the following is correct if you want you can pause and select your choice and the correct answer is c narcissistic personality disorder is more common in males option a is false because the overall prevalence is about 10% and b and d are more common in females final question Mrs H is a 49 year old housewife she uses a lot of makeup which embarrasses her two teenage children at family functions even those hosted by distant relatives she tries to get into the picture whenever photographs are taken she has very vocal and strong views on all issues whether local national or international however it is also clear that she lacks specific knowledge of those issues instead forming her views based on those of others her mood can change quickly but her emotions seem to lack depth her husband confirms that she has been like this ever since he has known her over 20 years ago there are no problems with respect to sleep appetite energy concentration etc but she frequently reports many non specific physical complaints what is the likely diagnosis is it hypomania mania borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder so if you want you can pause at this point go through the question and select your choice and the correct answer is d histrionic personality disorder and the points that suggest that she has histrionic personality disorder they have been underlined so uses a lot of makeup 
tries to get into the picture whenever photographs are taken. So someone who gives a lot of importance to physical appearance tries to be the center of attention. Very vocal and strong views but lacking specific knowledge, forming her views based on those of others. So exhibiting suggestibility, easily influenced. Mood can change quickly but emotions seem to lack depth. So labile but shallow effect is a feature of histrionic personality disorder. And the husband confirms that she has been like this ever since he has known her. So this is not a recent change. And there are no problems with respect to sleep, appetite, energy or concentration. So hypomania and mania are ruled out. And she reports many non-specific physical complaints. So somatization is uh, frequently associated with histrionic personality disorder. Apart from uh, the fact that her mood can change quickly, there are no other features suggestive of borderline personality disorder. So the likely diagnosis in this case is histrionic personality disorder. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching. Hope you found the material useful.